Hi everyone, I'm Lisa D'Amico with the Rockland Arts Festival, and I am here with the super talented Scott Stanton. I want to hear so much about your work. I cannot tell you. I've been thinking about this since I saw the portrait that you submitted for the festival because it's beautiful and it's incredibly engaging. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, thanks for asking me to participate. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um where should I start? I, I grew up in Rockland uh, in the 50s and the 60s. And I used to love when my parents got the Daily News and I would go through the comics. I loved the comics. Uh, Dick Tracy, Nancy, Dondi, Terry and the Pirates, all those early uh, comics. And I used to put uh, Silly Putty on the comics. You know about that? And you take it. Um and I love music. I'm still involved in the arts and music like I was uh, as a kid. Um, uh, I was very inspired by watching animated cartoons on television, Disney, Warner Brothers. Uh, I loved Mighty Mouse, Ralph, Ralph Bakshi's uh, Mighty Mouse. I used to make, uh, in high school, I made animated films with my dad's 8 millimeter uh, film camera. When I went off to college, I uh, first time I went to school, I went back to school later in life, too. But I went off to Orange County Community College and I studied with Ivan Michaud and Buzz Wallace. Uh, Ivan used to use a lot of checkerboards in his work and this whole group of us in school kind of copied some of his uh, styles. And I still use checkerboards in my work. I'll show you in, in a little bit. Um, I was very inspired by Tom Wesselman's pop art, uh, Robert Crumb, mm -hmm. fantastic cartoonist. Oh my God. In the seventies, I, I, uh, I moved out to San Francisco when a bunch of my friends worked at the rip off press and I got to meet, uh, I'd never met from, but, uh, I met some of the other, uh, some of the other artists. It was a wonderful time. Um, in the late 70s, early 80s, I had an animation company. Uh, I was playing in a band at the time, and we won a, a song contest uh, at WNEW Radio in New York. Vince Skelsa, he was kidding around with this company, the Autolite Battery Company, made a commercial about breaking down on the Long Island Expressway. And he kind of kiddingly said, hey, this this needs some music, this uh, this spot here. What is?" And like hundreds of people wrote a, wrote a song. But my friends and I wrote a song and we submitted it and we won the contest. Um, and it was a song about a guy who breaks down on the Long Island Expressway. And I spent a couple of years making an animated video of this song that later on w uh, was on HBO. Um, this is this is a painted cell uh, from the film. Um, What's the film's name? And can people still see it? Is it on I, YouTube? I have, a, I have an edited version of it up on YouTube. It's called dead battery on the lie lie okay. being the long island expressway so for everyone listening scott's going to send me the link and i will repost it so everybody can see. yes okay. absolutely so this is a cell this is called rotoscope and rotoscope you take a photograph or film strip of someone doing an action you process the film put the film into a stop motion projector and project each frame onto a piece of paper and trace it. Right. And then you go through this process of laying a sheet of acetate over the paper. You paint on the front side of the acetate with the, in this case was a rapidograph pen. Um, now it would be markers. And then it's painted on the reverse side. So this is what it looks like painted on the reverse side. This is very similar to when artists paint like store windows. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of that process where it is it is in reverse, the layering. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a, uh, this is, so uh, my late friend, Stefan Waldman and I had a company. So this is, you could say, it's a can see it. film. Yeah. this was a film that we did. It was called Number Fun. And it was all these numbers and they had a race and number one won the race. So here's a bunch of cells in, you could see the different stages. Right. That's so, fantastic. 
this is a process that I work with a lot and uh, I, I still do hand painting things now, but it's very time consuming and uh, it's just easier to do things digitally. I teach at uh, Pace University. I used to teach at Bergen Community College um, and it's all, everything is done on the computer now. Um, this is, this is a printed, this is the printed frame of the piece that's in your show. That's and this, this is the same way. This is, it's on layers of plexiglass, right? That's beautiful. So I took a photograph of Hannah and I carefully selected the photograph. And then can I, can I share my screen here yet? Of course, yes. That is spectacular, Scott. Oh my gosh. Thank that you. 3D effect. Uh-huh. It just brings you in. Uh, are you, can you, can you see this? I can see it's. Oh, wait, 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 here we go. It's a, it's a, there we go. That's it. All right. So here's, here's the piece and you can see, so. Uh, it's a G clay print, what I just showed you on plexiglass. And it's a G clay print for Hannah and for the splatter background. And then there's another background behind that. This is the same exact process of doing this, uh, only it's done digitally. Beautiful. So I, uh, when you do usually hand-drawn animation, you, you don't do you take all the tones and they're divided into sections, kind of like a colored pencil as opposed to doing gradients because it's a lot more time consuming. And if you're doing hundreds or thousands of paintings, you can't do that. It's just too time consuming. So um, you could see in, in, in this how her hair is broken up in, into different sections. Um, it takes a while to find the right the right tones and the right gradients. And you can see in her eyes here how how it's done in sections, right? You have this piece here and then the eyebrow and the flesh tone. Yeah, and in her eye, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, I love the, you know, like um, comic illustration style. You don't draw lines on the teeth. It's very co like comics, right? Mm-hmm. And in this piece here, I experimented with doing different kind of backgrounds. This one has kind of like a combination Mondrian background with a like a modern or a retro Jackson Pollock kind of splatter uh, piece. Uh, this is uh, this is a CD cover that I did from my friend Susan McMahon. Uh, I started a record label back in 2008, and this was her, Susan's record. And this was done the same way. I took a photograph of her, um, and it was all done in sections here, you can see. Mm -hmm. And the hair was all done very, you know, like a flowing graphic kind of design. And the background, this was the background piece. This was an aerial photograph that I took from a plain of Wyoming. Uh, and I pixelized it in a program called Painter. Mm -hmm. um, and a friend of mine who does 3D graphics, he made these globes for me, and I inserted them in the in the piece. It's wonderful uh, work. Thank you. Uh, this is like um, hmm, this is like um, I don't know if you're familiar with the work of Patrick Nagel. Yes. He was a painter in the 80s who died very young. Um, I, I've always loved, loved, loved his work. And his work is similar to what I've done with animation. It's very, very simple, mm -hmm. but it's really tight and it's uh, very expressive. Uh, this, uh, I took a photograph of this model, Chelsea. Um, and like... Uh, if you've ever seen the comics of Superman, his hair is black, but it's painted with blue highlights. Mm -hmm. um, so I use that kind of technique. And in the background here, these are orchids that I superimposed, kind of like an 80s um, um, background. Yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, and this piece, now this is, 
this is like 24 inches by 36 inches about and it, it's done the same way I did it on the on the Hannah piece with the layers so um, uh, my friend Bonnie had posed for me this was uh, her legs um, and I used the checkerboard background um, from my teacher Ivan I get was inspired by that so she's on one layer and this black piece is on another layer this yellow is on another layer and this the checker uh, the seashell uh, this is painted on the front of the layer of plexiglass uh, with enamel paints this um, is this is an incredible combination of materials I love this piece thank you thank you Scott um, do you mm -hmm. ever exhibit your work in person? I have. I usually do a show a year. Sometimes they're faculty shows uh -huh. at Pace uh, or at Bergen Community. Right. Um, they're wonderful. For everyone listening, I strongly recommend, you, of course, you go to the festival and you see Scott's work, but I also recommend you follow Scott. And there's nothing like seeing work in person. And this is the kind of work that really knocks it out of the park when you see it. Because when you showed me Hannah's, that's spectacular. Thank you. It's spectacular as, as a flat 2D, but when you see what you've done to it with the plexiglass and the layers, it really, it just takes it to a different level. And it's just really fascinating and engaging. Scott, our time is almost done. So hey. tell me, is there any parting words you have? come to the show and thank you so much for all of your efforts organizing this great festival. Uh, Scott, it's been a joy meeting you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it.